stato qui una volta. Il nome di un cavaliere misterioso risuona tra le città e i villaggi della Calabria. Zorro, terrore dei tiranni. Zorro, speranza degli oppressi. Le sue gesta sono leggenda. Il suo nome è il simbolo della libertà. La sua spada è il simbolo della giustizia. Zorro, l'eroe irresistibile e sorridente nella grande interpretazione di Tyrone Power. A fianco della indimenticabissima Linda Darnell. E con Basil Redborn, Gail Sondergaard e Jean Palais, Edward Bromberg, Crispin Marty, Montagu Lo. Credevo davvero che la danza fosse così bella. Signor, moriremo di fame. Che darò da mangiare alla mia famiglia? Nove pesos. Pietà, signor. Lo faccio almeno per la mia bambina. No, no, no. Madonnina, fa che qualcuno mi tolga da questo orribile posto. Qualcuno che io possa amare. Fa che sia gentile, fiero, curioso e anche bello. Ti prego. Il segno di Zorro, un film diretto da Rube Mamulian. Una vita di intrighi, di duelli, di indimenticabili avventure. Credevo davvero che la danza fosse così bella. Signor, morì. Come sono stato qui una volta? Il nome di un cavaliere misterioso risuona tra le città e i villaggi della Calabria. Primo di fame, che darò da mangiare alla mia famiglia? Nove pesos. Pietà, signor, lo faccio almeno per la mia bambina. No, no, no. Madonnina, fa che qualcuno mi tolga da questo orribile posto. Qualcuno che io possa amare. Fa che sia gentile, fiero, curioso e... Zorro. Terrore dei tiranni. Zorro, speranza degli oppressi. Le sue gesta sono leggenda. Il suo nome è il simbolo della libertà. La sua spada è il simbolo della giustizia. Zorro, l'eroe irresistibile e sorridente nella grande interpretazione di Tyrone Power. A fianco della indimenticabissima Linda Darnell. E con Basil Redborn. Gail Sondergaard e Jean Palais, Edward Bromberg, Crispin Marty, Montagu Lo. Welcome to Movie Humpers. I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. The sounds you may hear are dogs. Mm-hmm. Probably. Hopefully. We'll hope so. If something else happens... I'll be scared. This month is Adolescent Power Fantasy Month. That means we're talking about superhero movies, but we're we're far ahead of the Marvel phases. We're not... I don't know when we'll ever get to those. I think I need a, maybe some years in between before I revisit them. I'm okay if we don't. I'm loving this month. Yeah, that's because it's the, the, the fair from our childhood and also our Monday drops, this one. Mm-hmm. 
We're getting into more of the classic adolescent power fantasy, the stuff that maybe inspired some of the characters we're discussing later in the week. Some masked heroes, some yeah. people fighting for the every man. Yes. And the guy we're talking about today is a fellow by the name of Zorro. Mm-hmm. Good old Zorro. And he was created around the like the turn of the 20th century early on, and he was a masked figure with a dual identity. Yeah, he's very much like a Robin Hood. He's like a guy from money, but then he sees the injustice, and so he can't fight. He doesn't fight from, like, within. Mm-hmm. He, like, secretly goes around. Zorro, in particular, this movie is more of an origin story. Yeah. But as Zorro's story continues, he has a secret cave hideout. Mm-hmm. He has access to resources. Oh, I don't know all of this. So he's like a Batman. He is, exactly. And a lot of, he's one of the characters that kind of inspired a character like Batman along with, you know, those serialized, radio serialized characters like mm. the shadow and shit like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And all of that stuff leads directly into the guy we're going to talk about later this week. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun to go back and see kind of the spiritual origins of these characters. That was really cool. And this is, I had never seen Tyrone Power. Yeah, this is your first Tyrone Power. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Mark of Zorro from 1940, directed by Ruben Mamoulian, written by J.T. Foote, Garrett Fort, a lot of people, starring Tyrone Power, Basil Rathbone, Linda Darnell, and Gail Sundergaard. Yes, Tyrone. This is your first Tyrone yes. Power. What a hunk, right? This is my first Tyrone Power. Yeah, he's a good looking man. As far as I can, I mean, I think he's a Euro mutt like many of us. Uh huh. I was trying to find some Hispanic origin with him. It was kind of Spanish. Yeah, yeah. I don't, if it is, it's very little. I think he has a lot of French in him. There were like Spanish Mexican people in this movie. Yeah, the more Mexican people were kind of more like the bit actors, the. Yeah. Um, but of course this, this must take place at like 1948 before or before because California be, or 1848, 1848 yeah. because California became a territory at that time. Mm-hmm. So this is, this appears to be Spanish occupy, occupied California yeah. cause all the, everyone's like going back and forth to Spain, talking about going to Spain. Our uh-huh. main character, Mr. Uh, what is Zorro's fucking name? Vega, Don Diego Vega. Don Diego Vega. Yeah, Tyrone Power, what a hunk. You know, Lana yeah. Turner let him bust straight up raw in it, you know? Yeah. And he wouldn't commit to a child out of wedlock because that scared the shit out of actors back then. Right. And I mean, he could have married her. In Hollywood, like, everyone had no less than three abortions under their belt at the time, right? I so, mean, who knows still, probably. Right. So I guess. Tyrone was single and he didn't want to get, uh, he wanted to get a divorce or not a divorce, an abortion. Mm-hmm. Well, he went off to Europe. What's more fun, a divorce or an abortion? I, I what would you pick? It depends on the circumstances. In, th- in this world, yeah. there's only two things that you can do that are considered fun because the world is so shit. So divorce or an abortion, pick one. Which one would you rather have? I mean, I would say abortion is easier because you can just like handle it on your own. The divorce paperwork can be terrible, but divorce could be fun if you're getting out of a terrible situation. Divorce is fun at the very end when you're signing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, abortion. Neither is fun during. Yeah, neither that's is true. a fun process. But arguably, an abortion is like physically one day, emotionally you have to deal with that. Yeah. But if I had to do one a, or the other, a divorce can last for months. It can. Yeah. And it's awful. So and you if want it's contested, it can be really terrible. But an abortion, you can just make a decision on your own and go do it. Yeah. You may have to drive to certain states, but yes. I know. It's actually not that easy now. Yeah. It's easier to get a divorce now. I'll give you one. A divorce? Oh, an abortion. Oh. <laughs> just don't tell anyone. Can I have neither? Yeah. Okay. I don't need an abortion. As I'm far not, as I know. If anyone came up to me and was like, I need an abortion. Can you drive me somewhere? Oh, I'd drive anybody anywhere. No questions yeah. asked. If you need a, you need a ride, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> we'll drive you. <laughs> Allegedly, we will. Allegedly. Theoretically. Would you drive a 90-year-old woman to go get an abortion? If she was actually pregnant? She is in this then scenario. Yeah. If she actually was pregnant, yes, I would. If she wanted to get an abortion. That's good. I was testing you. 
What would I say? No, I want to force this 90 year old to have a baby. Maybe you could accuse her of faking her pregnancy. Listen, if you want to go through that and you're not actually pregnant, I don't know what your motivation is. Maybe you're delusional. I'd need some paperwork, maybe, if I was concerned about their mental health. We went off the rails here. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so Tyro Power, he fucking busted Raw on Lana Turner. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, we're not married and I'm a star and you're a star. Yeah. And I'm going to go off to Europe for a little while. And since he wouldn't commit, she aborted the baby. Yep. And then he came back, and he had a different girl on. So his she arm. made the right decision. How, what a what? How? What if she had that baby and was just pining for him, and like lost her whole career? That would be tragic. She didn't lose her career per se any more than anyone else did when they get older mm. in that time. Well, but, I just meant if you have a baby, sometimes you know that could have been scandalous. But she they might have hidden her away. She did consider him like his her one true love like that the one that got away that he saw her what other guys didn't even though he straight up was like vacuum that charm baby vacuum that baby out but that's charm i mean like he made her feel special but i imagine anyone in his orbit felt incredibly special how big a player you gotta be to be like lana turner nah i mean he could probably have anybody he could handsome yeah i mean charismatic as shit the charm is oozing out of this, he would have, he could have impregnated me, probably, <laughs> if he wanted to. Right. 1940s, <laughs> The Mark of Zorro. I, I often considered one of um, his best movies as well. He did, much like Errol Flynn, who we will talk about later this month, he did like a lot of pirate movies and stuff. That was mm, the adolescent. I could totally see that. That was the adolescent power fantasy that we all, these are like, matinee stars you would go to the movies in the middle of the day mm-hmm. lay down a nickel and go watch your pirate picture or nice. your zorro picture and so these are some big time dudes this was the adolescent power fantasy of the day so in mark of zorro our, our boy don diego uh vega <laughs> diego vega is in spain and he's learning how to sword fight Oh yeah, and he's like the best. And he's like, and he's boss. He's a boss ass bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, yo, I knocked up Lana Turner, and I I can use both swords if I need to. <laughs> so he comes back to California. His father calls him to come home. Yes. And when he left, his father was essentially the governor. Essentially. Essentially. And so his father calls him home. He doesn't know why. He comes back into town. He looks all froofy, right? Because he looks like he looks like some like ice skating matador. Like he has like, yeah. all this glitter, but like the short jackets. He's very fancy and foppy. Um, once he gets to town, but when he's on the way, he keeps saying like, "Oh yeah, my father is that." Do you know what that word is? Because I use it so much. I can't remember. Governor. We'll and just say so governor. <laughs> my father is the governor, and everyone starts like being scared of him and like spitting and like doing terrible things. And at one point, he finds out that like the governor cut this man's tongue out, and he's like, "What the fuck is going on with yeah, my dad?" Yeah. And so then he's like, "Something's wrong." So he shows up back at his dad's house and acts as though. He didn't learn a thing about fighting in Spain, but he's become this huge, like, foppy, like, very feminine, like, dude. Yeah, everyone kind of thinks he's just kind of a dandy. And everyone's upset with him. Like, his dad's like, what's up with you? And no one's really that threatened by him. His dad's real rule of the law kind of guy. Yeah, and when he went to go meet his father, he finds out that his dad's not in charge anymore. It's this little trolley dude. Yeah, yeah. And... Then he goes to see his dad, and the friar's there, who I guess, like, trained him. That friar must smoke, like, ten packs a day. Welcome back to your home in my heart, Diego. That guy's voice Uh, is, like, uh, insane. uh, Yeah, so they're both like, we gotta rise up and fight against this man, and and Diego's like, oh, no, 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 no. His wife's charming. He's fine. I met him. He said I could be at home in his house. He's just putting on a front, though. Totally putting on a front. So the corrupt governor, he's got this, um, like, he's got, you know, they've got their militias, right? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is Diego Vega is just, he's a colonizer like everyone else. He's just one of the good ones, right? Yeah. But, like, we, we see Mexicans in this movie, but they're bit players. They're victims. They're people who are cheering for Zorro. In the movie, they call them the peons. Yeah. And the the kind of, uh, like, the soldier men who used to be in charge are, like, the caballeros. And the corrupt governor has this right-hand man who's played by 
Esteban, who's played by Basil Rathbone. Mm-hmm. Speaking of hunks, this guy sunk his Rathbone. He's, in a few he's sinking it into day. the governor's wife. Yeah. That's happening. I also, the governor's wife also is kind of like, she meets Diego Varga and she's leaving like this line open, like in case, like, oh, maybe I can actually get married to him if something goes wrong. Like, yeah. She's making these choices, like, I might be able to fuck him. I might be able to fuck him. She's like playing her own if game. If I leave my husband, I could maybe marry this guy. And apparently. Yeah. Uh, Esteban is trying to convince her to leave her husband. And Diego's like, no, don't leave your husband. Mm -hmm. Stay with your husband and make him take you to Spain. Get the fuck out of town, Yeah, yeah. And then I'll come see you there. Like, he's very flirty with her to manipulate. But the fuck off to Spain, everyone's kind of supporting that, except the governor, because it's the most peaceful solution Mm -hmm. to get the other elder Varga back into power. Yes. And Varga won't push back because he's um, lawful good or something. He won't, like, break the law for any reason. Yeah, so so Daddy Vega. Yeah. Is it Vega or Varga? Vega. Vega uh, thinks his son's a disappointment, and he doesn't know what to do. And then... He thinks his son's probably gay. You know what I really loved is that Zoro just showed up. There was no... What should I do? I need to make a decision. I need he's to not, fight that. He just straight up was like, where's not my a, mask? There's not a scene where he's sewing a costume or staring at his mask first. No. I will become a Zorro. He just immediately shows up, puts like rips down this decree, puts up his own kind of... There's this like sign thing they keep doing and does his little Z and he's like, I'm here to make things right. And, all, and the townspeople were like, hell yeah, this bro... Yeah, he's going to save Los Angeles. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... So, yeah, Zoro's just there. And so the word gets out. And uh, at one point, uh, Diego is, he goes into a church and he dresses like a monk. He's running because he, he had gone in to threaten the governor. And he basically was like, I'm going to kill you if you don't fuck off to Spain and say that Elder Vega is the new governor. Right, right. And so. Which should be quite a clue as to who's connected to this exactly. threat. Exactly. Well, you know. The governor does not have a lot of good moments, but he does at one point believe that Zorro's working for the Caballeros, that yeah. they've like appointed him to work for them, but he's not. But he does think like, oh, duh, Vega's in charge of this Zorro man, mm-hmm. whatever. But he's running from them, and yeah, he dresses up like a friar, and he hides in the church. And there's this lady, I forget her name, she's played by Linda Darnell, um, mm-hmm. and it's the love interest, the she's maid the Marian. the niece of the bad guy. Right. Just and like Maid Marian. Exactly. It's very Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, and he's and she's giving confessions because she thinks she's talking to a priest. And he's like, uh, no, you don't want to join a nunnery. No, no, you don't want to do that. He's giving her advice to like, so that like she's hot and ready mm-hmm. by the time Zoro wants to get up in there. But even before that bit is over, she realizes while they're still standing in the room that he is Zorro. Yeah. So, and she just immediately, no thought behind it, just goes, oh, I love this guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell on him. You know, really, there's only maybe three or four scenes where him in a mask, Mm -hmm. if that, maybe three. Like, there's not a lot of, like, full Zorro. No, I mean the biggest one is is the Rathbone when he had they have the the fight. And I think the concept to that is the same way you got Robert Downey Jr. always showing his face as much as possible in modern superhero movies where they're trying to show their face mm. is that you're a star, you're a hunk, Tyrone Power. We need a few scenes with you dressed like Zorro, but you're too much of a babe, a himbo mm-hmm. to cover that mug up. Absolutely. And so, yeah, the, the, it's a lot of back and forth and the, with the governor. Sometimes he wants to go to Spain, sometimes he doesn't. And so, and Esteban, his right hand man, knows that some shit's like shady as shit. And D- Diego, he comes to their house and he's kind of talking a lot of shit. And Zorro has arrived. I think, I think Zorro arrived before and threatened the governor. Yeah. And did his mark on the wall. So Diego comes back like, oh, what's going on? What are you so scared of? And then, but he's still also like throwing his dick around a little Mm -hmm. bit. Like he's threatening, uh, Esteban, uh, played by Basil Rathbone. 
So they challenge each other to a sword duel. Oh, that's right. He does that as Diego. Yeah. Oh, but they he's, know he's Zoro at that point. They, they kinda, figure it out. They figure it out after the sword fight because oh. he's so fucking good at sword play that the governor's like, oh shit. And it actually well, they kinda, also they figure out because he used to live there because that was their old house. There's like a secret passageway, and they figure out that's how he was getting in to threaten the governor with no one seeing. And they him. find that out later as yeah, well. Yeah, you're right. Okay. But we're at the sword fight yeah. scene. Yeah. And, and folks, so good. This is kind of like the selling point of this movie uh, with Tyrone Power and Basil Rathbone having this fucking sword fight in the governor's room. Mm -hmm. It's dope as shit. We have a hero with us. Like, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. And it, it's very, it must have been very exciting in 1940 at the uh, date, at the matinee when you're like, yeah. Well, and they're just completely really sword fighting. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're probably trick swords. They're not like super sharpened. Totally. But, but they're these just. these two men are doing this. And when uh, Tyrone Power is doing his swashbuckling or when he's Zorro. He's got so much extra oomph energy to his performance because he ends up killing Basil Rathbone and then everyone starts to realize what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then it, the climax goes into where they have to like literally run the governor out. I actually kind of forget exactly how it ends, but mm -hmm. he's, but it seems like everyone knows he's Zorro. Like his identity is like out the window by the end of the movie. And there's this mass fight where he's fighting off crowds of people. Yes. And just the energy and the like the intensity that Tyrone Power is throwing, like trying to get away with from masses of like this militia. Well, he basically leads this like uprising and they they beat them all up to the point where then they stand the governor up in front of everyone and is like, now you're going to tell everybody yeah. that you're leaving and that my daddy is in charge. And, and he does. And he does so. Because what else is he going to do? They're going to kill him. But like this, it, the way he portrayed it, the way Tyrone Power so effortlessly gets into the action, it was somehow convincing that this one dude could fight off like hordes of militia guys mm -hmm. around him just by how like hardcore he was. And apparently Power, you know, later in his, after this point, he split his time more between like stage acting, Broadway stuff, because that was kind of his first love. Yeah. And so he kind of, Makes sp sense. he split his time between that and film, but he died at, I think he was only 44. Whoa. A lot of these old actors would just like be gone, like yeah. before they were 50. And he was one of them. How, can you imagine him today? No, he'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> even if he made it past 44. That was a test. I bet he still looks good in that casket, though. Those bones, I, man. I wonder where he's... Is he buried at Hollywood forever? I need to look that up. When we get to Los... We La should go there. When we get to Los Angeles, we I think we should do the old Hollywood tours and shit. I really want to. I think to. we'd really like that. But yeah, that's this movie, Mark of Zorro. It's actually fun as fuck. And if you're like... What is a good Zorro movie? This is the one. Check this one yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. But we hump movies. Yes. You're going to give this one through five humps. You're going to give it one through five humps combined for best out of ten. Yeah. I know you'd probably hump Tyrone Power, no problem. Probably get knocked up by him. Probably have one of his abortions. Tyrone Power is not really my type. But I can appreciate him. Back then, all these stars, they had no less than three abortions under their belt. Male, male or female. It's just how it was. There is, is the abortion doctor to the stars. Is he buried in Hollywood Ooh. forever? He should. He, he's earned his place. You know, you know, remember, uh, Ronald Reagan was an actor too. Yeah. He probably had abortions too. And I bet Nancy, you, you know about the Nancy rumors, right? Oh, that Nancy was got around straight up dome queen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's that's one of the positive aspects. I have heard of Nancy. one person say that. Me, because <laughs> I love to tell that. All right, how many how many uh, humps? How many times you hump this movie? This was so fun.
I think I'm like 4.25. Wow. You know, I'm I'm giving it a solid four. Yeah. As far as like classic action, if anyone was like, what is an old movie that's good action? This, this is one of the best I'm gonna throw that this, I've seen. I'm throwing that on the list for yeah. sure. And I'm kind of more, like I said, uh, from what I've researched, it seems like this is one of the better action-oriented Tyrone Power movies. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect, and I was so pleasantly surprised the entire time. I and, just thought it was fun. And uh, we'll compare and contrast them to Errol Flynn for later this month. But yeah. but as far as like pure looks, we're picking Tyrone Power. All right. And we're, you know, we're not 15, so we're a little old for Errol Flynn. I think we could probably hook up with uh, <laughs> Tyrone in our, like now, if he was here, you know. He would not hook up with us. Well, man, if he, <laughs> if he won't even like We're marry not, Lana Turner. This is what I'm saying. No, true. He's not going for us. If you don't give a damn, don't throw it up. But I give a damn, so I'm going to throw it up. Check it out. <laughs> Look near the bottom, number 22, the Mark of Zorro. Rest, Hell yeah. Rest confidently in the A tier between Bo is Afraid and Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, directed by David Handjob. David Handjob? That's the director of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I'm just making my funnies. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Check the links or check the show notes for links in other places to find us. Are you aware of Zorro, the roots of adolescent power fantasy? What do you think of Tyrone Power? Would you let him hit it raw? Uh, if you would let Tyrone Power hit it raw, uh, like, hit, like, and subscribe on this video. <laughs> And then just comment, I would let Tyrone Power hit it raw in the comments under this. Yeah. And, I mean, we're talking about a movie from 1940. I don't know if it's going to get a lot of, as much traction as Batman will. Sure. But we'll see. Sure. We'll see. All right? Would you let Tyrone Power hit it raw? I would. Tell me in the comments that you would. And if you wouldn't, tell us in the comments why not. All right? So let's get the fuck out of here. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors.